we actually have a resolution. Hello, Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe here. And as the title and the intro suggest, yes, finally, this London Lions, this Algiris Kaunas, Tessonet, the whole saga is over. Tessonet have become the, uh, well, the, the owners of the London Lions. Uh, Zalgiris will be running it. Everything that was in that original Zalgiris release has ended up being accurate, uh, which is quite remarkable. Uh, and everything in our first video, which our second video said might not be accurate, has turned out to also be accurate. So uh, let's, let's just get into it. Hello, this is Emma from Later. Doing something Emma from earlier should have done, which is asking all of you to please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. I may be pointing the wrong way. Uh, we would love to get all the support we can from all of you. We uh, The plan is Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the videos. Keep it coming. You're great. Keep the support up. We've been loving it the last couple of weeks. We want to keep pushing it on. And now back to the video. So on Friday, you would have noticed, well, very, very late on Friday, it might even have been technically Saturday Lithuanian time for being really awkward, but British time is what we're going with here because London Lions are British, Irish time happens to be the same as British time. And that Frank Dallaras, City AM, uh, he published the story saying that it was going to be Tessin and Zalgiris taking over. We were waiting for the statement from Hudson Weir, who were doing the administration of the Lions the whole time. And uh, obviously Hudson Weir had, in between, uh, said that the reports that they had taken it over were inaccurate. We'll get into why they would have said that and all that in a bit. But let's look into the statement I got literally this morning uh, from the, the reps of Hudson Weir, who are doing the administration, and uh, the key points from it. I'm just going to read bits of it here, and then we'll get into discussing what happened with the whole drama and what happens next with the London Lions so, and Zalgiris as a result. So, uh, on 30 July 2024, the London Lions were placed into administration by its debenture holder, leading to the appointment of Hasib Halauder and Nimish Patel from Hudson Weir, uh, the licensed insolvency practitioners. And they were tasked with managing the club's operations and securing a suitable buyer to preserve the club for the future. This is all we expected. Uh, Earlier in the uh, statement, they confirm the London Lions Basketball Club, one of the UK's all the nice things, has been successfully sold following its recent and brief administration to Tessinet, a tech hub and shareholder of Zalgiris Kaunas, a prominent EuroLeague operation. And uh, there's lots of nice things they're saying about everybody here. Um, undisclosed some, key thing. And uh, the, mar the, the marketing process of the club has significant interest in attracted multi-million pound offers, they say. Uh, and uh, as, as administrators, Hudson Weir were obliged to accept the offer, which was in the best interest of the creditors of the company. And so that's, that's fantastic. And, um, you know, lots of nice things being said here. Uh, and as part of the final deal, Hudson Weir were able to save the club with no loss of jobs, a positive return for creditors, and the London Lions will be playing in the next season of, well, they say the BBL. It's now going to be called the British Super League. This is a very good return for all parties concerned. Uh, everything else is largely nice things. Uh, yeah, the, it's all very pleasant stuff. So, that's what happened. Zalgirish are running... Um, London Lions now, we have it confirmed. It's definitely, definitely happening. Uh, I know a few of you have been waiting for this video uh, for days, some for just hours. Uh, sorry, but we I wanted to make sure we had everything nailed down before I went out with another video on this. That's why we did our Canada video earlier in the week. Do check that out. And uh, yeah, so right. So we know who's owning it. So why the drama? Well, really, it comes down to technicalities, uh, nice and boring. Uh, but essentially, like, obviously, the statement that had come up uh, it began with the findings. Well, we found the company's house lo uh, document, which said, essentially, Zalgiris and Tessmes were taking effective control through a floating charge of London Lions. Uh, so that led to the statement from Zalgiris uh, that said, Tessinet were going to own London Lions, Zalgir Zalgiris would run it. Obviously, there's, there was this whole stuff, which is explained in the other video, explained it between Zalgirio Group and Zalgiris itself. Uh, I recommend you watch that video and my second one to understand the confusion of one person throughout all of this who is 20 years as a business journalist and a tech journalist, uh, almost as long as a basketball journalist, not almost as long, but well, more. we're talking a lot more than a decade covering basketball. And even I was kind of going, well, this is a little bit confusing. And so obviously Frank Dyler has published that report and it was all accurate and lots and lots of key information in there. And 
you're kind of going, right, so I obviously was emailing Hudson Weir, I was emailing Zalgirish, I was messaging Tessanet through their contact form, and I heard nothing from Zalgirish, I heard nothing from Tessanet, I did hear from Hudson Weir, they initially gave me effectively a statement reiterating what was in Frank's first piece. I followed up, and I will say that PR for um, uh, Hudson Weir, they are great, these are the administrator guys who are managing this whole process. Uh, so they really did a great job in saying, we think we'll have news now, we think we'll have news, and what, when to expect. They were managing expectations well, essentially. They were making sure that uh, I was at least knowing when to not put stuff up for my sake, as in they weren't saying it that way, but I was able to gauge, well, I don't want to do it now because I want to get this from them first. So a statement came in this morning, and uh, yeah, so everything we thought was going to happen has happened. And I say we thought was going to happen. Before we saw this filing, None of us thought this was going to happen. Let's get on to that. So yeah, uh, Zalgirish now have a team in Britain, effectively. Like, uh, there's a lot to look at here. Obviously, the London Lions have a strong brand, uh, one that had issues. You don't go to administration if you didn't. I think I'm safe saying that, even with Irish defamation law, uh, it's very, very strict, everybody. And so, yeah, there was there was that, but there was still a case of, well, you could see you could build there. There is that, like, you know, somewhere between 60k and 100k Lithuanians in London, most of whom, oh, sorry, people of Lithuanian descent, sorry, in London, uh, that includes people who are just straight Lithuanian, most of whom are focused in East London, which is where London lines are, so you have that market to tap into. Uh, naturally, you have already the existing British basketball fandom uh, within London itself, the Lions' own fans. And you had something to work with there, but also you had contracts and stuff to deal with, which we will get to, because the mention of no jobs loss is quite interesting. And so you had that. Everything seemed to be in place to do what was needed to be done. But I suppose the questions were essentially, uh, what will they do now going forward? Well, obviously it's not going to be spending at the budget London Lions previously had, because that just wasn't feasible realistically for where they were and Zalgirish is seeing this uh, and Tessonet really like they are seeing this as a logical investment like it used to be a case of if you invest in a sports club and think you're going to gain from it you're a fool uh, that has changed radically because of what we're seeing uh, particularly with pro teams uh, in America but even now with like football clubs across Europe uh, and we will see it across other teams as well I can assure you that um, value being gained essentially because of their ability to attract advertising in a way that other properties in entertainment just can't because live sport is so valuable for broadcast right now and so any live sport anything like that can attract sponsorship and brand loyalty and all those lovely big things so Zalgirish and Tessanet would know that and like Tom Ackman who's obviously a key player in all of this with his uh, Mr. Nord uh, you know he's gonna be a key player in all of this going forward but it's expect them to build up London I expect London to still be one of if not the strongest teams in the BBL next year they won't be in Euro Cup that ship has long sailed but they might suddenly start looking at ways back into Europe as soon as uh, the 25-6 season 25-26 season I could see that easily happening and that obviously depends on how they manage this process, but the goal obviously is to get it up to being as valuable an entity as possible because then you come into the issue with EuroLeague of same owner, two clubs, and even with the mixed management and all that, it's still going to be an issue at the board level of EuroLeague. So, and I would imagine Zalgirish and Tessanetta thought this through, there is a way for them to make an exit here where they feel what was a distressed asset, they can build into being a valuable asset, essentially at a low cost have come in and they can sell at a much higher cost where they've built it to be a brand that has real value to an investor coming in who doesn't make the mistakes of the previous owner essentially of the London Lions. Thing is, there's still a couple of questions to be answered. So now we get a little bit of law stuff and very loosely around it if I'm being entirely honest but the key thing to bear in mind is the transfer of undertakings protect, protection of employment basically when a business is transferred and employment is protected now that statement we had at the start all jobs are being kept which implies that uh, the two the two obligations are basically or two be obligations are being taken on entirely you know by the new shareholders from what i can read there so so long as they manage that correctly they should be fine there's obviously some serious contracts there though to be managed so we'll see how that goes with what players are being kept or what players have been paid off essentially to move on uh how that works with the sort of creditors it's going to be quite a few days if not weeks really before we see how all that plays out uh like this contract with the sam decker one you know which are huge by BBL standards or BSL which is even annoying because Turkey's BSL 
this is annoying. Uh, it's by British Super League standards. I'm not saying Super League just flat out because Ireland, okay, I'm wearing a Tuscan Raiders jersey, but I'm Irish. Uh, you know, we, we were already called Super League. And there's also Super League in rugby, Super League in netball. It's a common name. So, but yeah, so how they manage the contracts, that's something to keep an eye on. It, these aren't legal questions more, well, it could become legal questions, but more likely they're ooh-ah questions, as in these are qu things we're going to see which will indicate to us how Zalgirish and Tessanet plan to run the London Lions going forward and what level they expect to try and build this uh, team up to be whatever form it's going to take in Britain and you would imagine internationally because again London it's a huge market but huge markets are a nightmare to crack so that's that's pretty much it this isn't the longest video I know it's about 10 minutes long but I think we've got everything we need to know from this Zalgirish and Tessanet will be running the London Lions. Uh, the process is uh, complete and the questions now are really detail ones, like stuff that nerds like me and people who tend to visit this channel like. But, um, you know, still, they're processy questions. So yeah, there's a lot to get through there and uh, we, we'll see. I, I, I hope to be revisiting London Lions this season, by the way, just to be clear, uh, both in this form, but also in person. I would like to hopefully get over to a couple of games this year. Uh, one of my best mates, well, one of my best mates lives in London. Uh, so, like, you know, uh, he's currently in the process of uh, moving house, though. So I'm going to see if he can get that sorted first before I sort of, you know, make the visit. Because, like, I won't be imposing on him, don't worry. But it's more a case of, if I'm visiting my boy, I don't want him to have the stress of a house move underway, you know? These are the key details you want. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you keep enjoying, because this is... This is one story. We're going to have a lot of stories we're telling throughout the season. Uh, various different basketball ones. And uh, I loved I think Aris Barkas posting end of the 23-24 season for him was the end of the Olympics. For me, it's like, nah, man. Don't be wrong. Love you, my boy. That was the start of the 24-25 season as far as I was concerned. Because there is no end. There is no beginning. It's all the one thing. Alrighty. Uh, listen, thank you all for watching. I hope you subscribe. And uh, you can check out our merch links. Uh, none of these are my merch, obviously. But our merch links are below. And uh, huge shout out. Sorry, forgot to mention Matt Hardy, who had the final piece. A uh, huge shout out to him. Uh, as well at City AM. He had the final piece confirming there this morning. So Frank and Matt Hardy, follow them on their socials, please. Frank Dollar and Matt Hardy. And I will see you all soon.